This is, somebody asked me what paint I was using. So I'm just showing that it's a dollar, well, it's a pouring acrylic. It's a pouring craft paint, which we have here. Um, I prefer to the tube paints because it's thinner. It doesn't take as much mixing. What I'm doing here is adding silicone. I just want to add silicone to every alternate drop, I mean, every alternate color. What I've done is taken the paint, mixed it up with pouring medium, added some water, and then get it, got the paint to the consistency that I'm wanting. Okay, so what now I'm doing now is just going to be adding the base paint. Okay, first of all, raise your canvas off the background paper, otherwise it's going to stick when you when it dries. Okay, there's the base paint. You can see it's quite, uh, it sits, it's holding its shape, which is quite nice for this technique because you don't want it to be too fluid. You'll lose the shape, the definition around the, the feather or the leaf, whatever you want it to be. Okay, just spreading the paint. I'm going to pour some of that paint off because it's too thick. If your paint is too thick, it's going to crack when it dries. And also when you pour it off, um, it gives it a nice, it gives the surface a nice smooth finish. So your paint is even. I don't add anything but water to the background paint because you waste so much of it. You pour, use a lot of it, so you pour it off. I've just put the paint around the edges as well because some of the, the coloured paint will go over the edge. It gives it quite a nice effect. Now I'm heating the air bubbles on that background. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm pouring into the cup. Okay, you there isn't a lot of paint in this technique, especially because it's a small canvas. So I'm just adding layer by layer. Then I'm going to give it a little bit of a swirl with a stick afterwards, just to combine those paints. I don't want to mix them up in the cup. I just want to combine them so that when I pour it, they don't come out as separate colors. Less is more, again, with this technique. You want to have space on the background to be able to move that paint around. There, I'm giving a little swirl. Okay, I'm just showing you how little paint there is in the cup. Pour, pinching the top to make a spout. When you are pulling out with a palette knife, keep the blade flat. The minute you put that blade at an angle, you dig into the background. You're going to dig that paint and show the canvas. Okay, so you want that to be flat. And just now, I actually just changed that palette knife because I battled with that to keep it flat. Remember the shape that you're wanting it to go in. You want it to all go the same way. You can already see it starting to react to get those cells. Just working back into it slightly. Be careful of making it, every, you'll notice every time I take that palette knife back, I've wiped it off. There I'm just trying to create the center, find the center of the thing that I want to work from. Which is quite awkward to try and pull it towards me, so I just turned the canvas around to try and push it out the other way. I would normally do this on a portrait format but with the camera with the angle of the camera I had to do it as a landscape piece so it was quite awkward to pull it out there's a lot of lacing going on in here I should really on one of the close-ups when I show you when you get to the end of the video you'll see the close-ups that one section looks like a dragon's wing maybe me being fanciful
Can you see how that the edges are contained? They're not breaking up into that background because of the paint, the background paint being thicker, um, the background paint being the white paint. Okay, I'm just working a little bit into it again, just pulling out little edges, bits and pieces. It's quite dense in the middle. I think at this stage I want to go and find, with it being a feather or a leaf or whatever it is that you're wanting it to be, I also, or if you just want it to be an abstract piece, it does need an anchor. So I went to find a piece of string, which was too short, so I used a bit of a leather cord. Um, and then I just stuck in some black paint there, which you can see off camera, well, with off camera I'm putting black paint into a cup. And then I'm going to put the cord into that black paint, lay it across the center of that canvas from one end to the other end, and then just pull that cord straight straight off. I just wanted to give it something to anchor the painting. Instead of it all being wishy-washy, just to give it something, some a bit of definition. You can see I'm laying the, cam the cord, just letting it sit for a little bit so some of that paint goes onto the painting the black paint that I've put on the cord and just pulling it through. Try not to lift the cord or the string or chain or whatever it is that you use until it's off the canvas. Here I'm just trying to break that center bit up a little bit. Lovely clip I have. Okay, just so that it's not so I'm trying to almost like make it part of the painting instead of it being such a so such a separate piece. I'm just pulling little bits out. Ah, the ever present glitter. I think everything, every painting, just about every painting of mine has got this glitter on it. I'm just bringing the camera down to try and give you a close-up view. I really actually do like this piece. It's got a lot of subtlety and that purple and that green, the maroon and the green have worked really well. Luckily they didn't mix to make a muddy colour. There's the, there's the dragon wing and I love the lacing that's going on in there and I love the very dense pieces, the de very dense areas of paint. Sure, I could split this a little bit. Oh, I'm signing off now, saying goodbye. I should have split that and cut that off. Anyway, there's some close-ups coming. Okay, well, I um, hope you enjoy it. Please let me know in your comments if you enjoyed the video, if you learnt anything.